What's up, everybody? We're back with Scummy Unplugged with a special guest, Chris Aiken. Basis for Strung Out, and uh, just to kick it off, man, I gotta tell you, I'm not just saying this because you guys, you're here, but Strung Out has been my favorite band since I was a kid. Ashes, uh, you don't understand, and Krusty Demons yeah, Dirt Krusty One. Demons. You probably know that was the anthem for a lot of us dirt bike riders, yeah. and uh, Strung Out has been there from day one. So I guess just to kind of jump into it, man, um, how did you get into music? How did I get into music? It's wow, kind of like a big question, but let's just. I, I'm go gonna with say it. it's it's you know it's my upbringing. It's my parents. You know, I had uh, my parents were playing Beatles records. Um, Rolling Stones, and then like Billy Joel, my mom was playing Air Supply, you know, all that stuff in the house. We had, you know, vinyl, or I mean, that's back when it was just vinyl, yeah. um, was that. And it, honestly, it was uh, when I moved to California in 82, I moved to Thousand Oaks, and um, that's when I found out about, you know, MTV and just okay. rock videos, and I found out about Ozzy Osbourne and Twisted Sister and Van Halen and like Def Leppard. That was just like the stuff I went, whoa. You know, yeah. like it just blew me away. And right then, I knew I wanted to play guitar. That was your path. You yeah. saw that, that's what you yeah, wanted right, to Right be. when I was seven, yeah, just right away, it's like, I want a guitar. You know? I, don't, I don't understand music. I mean, I look at you guys, like, you're a rock star in my eyes, and I go to every one of your shows I can, and I just look at you guys like, I, just, I don't understand. I think, is it kind of true, like, you're just born knowing how to play an instrument and all that? Because uh, I mean, I think with... Some people maybe, you know, for sure. How uh, was it for you? Did you pick it up right away or? I mean, I, I had a love for it right away, like okay. an unquestionable, passionate, this gravitating love for it. But um, it took me some some years to get better, you know, but uh, it, again, it's something I just, I developed a really good habit of playing it all the time and practicing okay. all the time. So I just became, eventually over time, it became natural, you know, and, but. And, um, and then fast forward, what? What was like the first band? Did you have a type of music you wanted to be in, like the band of rock and roll, punk rock? Because you're in one of the best, sickest punk rock bands ever. Oh, thank you, man. I, I, I think but really, did... you know, from growing up and being, I mean, I love all kinds of music for okay. sure. I appreciate it all. And uh, I was really obviously playing more, you know, metal, rock, punk rock kind mm -hmm. of things. And when the whole 90s um, uh, Epitaph, Fat Records, Nitro Records, and all that shit came out, all those bands, um, and then strung out, you know, I was living in the town next door, Thousand Oaks, and strung out from Simi Valley, so, um, and we were all having mutual friends of a friend that yeah, knew somebody yeah, yeah. else, and it was that, and strung out was like, oh yeah, like, this band's cool, because they're the band that got signed. You yeah, know, it's like, yeah. oh, they got signed, and this is back when it's a fucking big deal to go, you know, to get signed and to go on tour, and um, I remember having their record, their first record, and then, uh, it was funny how when the second record came out, my, my friend Tyler, who plays bass in the band Pulley, him and I went to high school together in Thousand okay. Oaks. And we're the two guys that ended up being in the Epitaph Fet Records bands. And, um, but he had a copy of Suburban Teenage Wasteland Blues, which is our second record, before it came out. So uh -huh. I remember listening to that, and it was just like, they evolved, Strung Out evolved so much from that first record to this record, it was, I'm like, whoa, this is exactly the kind of music I'm writing right now. Like, this is like the band I should be in. You know, like, it was a, it was a trip, like how it just, like, it was like the universe spoke to me of like, this is a band I want, I want to be in. And I remember even putting that out into the universe too. I mean, I was air drumming in my room to that record and just fucking, you know, rocking out to it. And I was like, I'm going to be in this band one day. And I didn't think I'd be playing fucking bass guitar in the band because I'm a guitar player. But uh, Were you in a band at this time? Uh, yeah, I was um, just, I was in a band in high school at Thousand Oaks High School that we had um, just me and my three other friends. We, we put together some metal band. It was called Crucifer. <laughs> and it's like, we actually played the quad at lunch. So that was like my claim <laughs> to fame. We did that. And it was like that feeling though. I remember I was in 11th grade and we played the quad at lunch. We had a big crowd and we we're playing all originals and we had one cover song. Um, and uh, actually we had two cover songs. We did Pipeline, yeah. you know, and then the last song was the one I was going to sing. We did a Sepultura cover, which is like, you know, metal. And it's like, we got like 10 seconds into it and the pit started, so they pulled the plug. But anyways, uh, going back into fifth period after lunch, um, going back in the classroom, tw you know, 20 minutes late, cause I had to load out, you know, load the, load the gear up, you know, and <laughs> all that shit. I, I go back in class and all, I walk in, everyone just fucking starts you know, applauding and like cheering. You're and like I was like, holy star. shit, like, whoa. And I was, I was in the class with all seniors too. So I was the junior and I was like, whoa, like, so it was, that was like your first taste of yeah. It was like my first taste of like that validation <laughs> of like holy shit. Like, did know, you kind of feel, feel like you not made it, but <clears throat> that's like 
fit. This is your career. This is what you really wanted to pursue. Yeah. After I, that, that was. Yeah, I think it, it, it was like constant valid, you know, validations throughout life, you know, and that was like the pinnacle of one of like, I mean, like to me to bring it up right now, that happened back in, you know, 1992. Yeah. You know, and that's like, I can remember that was like April 25th, 1992, that happened. And it was just, it was, that was, was like, I have to do this. Yeah. Like, I have to do this at all fucking costs. I love music, you know. That was your passion. When yeah. did you get into Strung Out? I got into Strung Out in 99, 1999, January 99. I played my first shows of them. My first two shows I played at the band was two sold out shows, Ventura Theater and The Glass House in Pomona. And uh, I jammed with those guys like two days before that. Like, okay. And I just, I knew all the songs on bass. My friend Tyler, uh, Tyler Rebbe from the band Pulley, him and I again were, we went to high school together and he was already in Pulley and uh, it was the chance, you know, to play bass. And I'm like, well, I'm a guitar player, but you know, I'll fucking, I'll learn flute to be in your fucking band. Fuck yeah, Strong, I'll, I'll do whatever, you know, like, so I borrowed Tyler's bass and, um, how did that happen? He's, I'm the interviewer, but I'm, I'm a fan. So this is an interesting story. How did you actually, where was the, uh, the old bass guitarist for Strung Out? How did, how did you make that transition? Um, well, it was the thing, I think just over the years, um, uh, there's a certain uh, personality differences and uh, some friction, and you know, okay, with the old yeah. bass player. So it, it just kind of a thing that kind of worked its way out. And um, I felt like, I think the band, just, the other four guys united as one and were like, yeah. we need to get rid of this. And you know, it happened the way it did. And uh, he was a great songwriter. You yeah. know, I owe everything to him, to Jim Cherry. He's the reason why I'm in this band and why I had to learn all these fucking crazy songs he wrote and played. I was like, how the fuck did you play this? You yeah, know, like, yeah. There's stuff I still don't know exactly how to, how he played it. You know? That's but crazy. I, but I, I think this is right. But uh, So how long have you been, what, 17 years? It's, it'll, be, it'll be 19 years in January. So at that's that point, crazy. you always round up. You always say, yeah, 20 years. <laughs> you always got to round up. You know? so I think better. that's a big accomplishment, yeah. man. I mean, dude, it's crazy. 20 years, yeah. dude, you guys' lifestyle, um, I guess kind of fast forward, you know, where we're at recovery today magazine obviously we're here for a reason and uh i was on warp tour i rode dirt bikes and i remember yeah, yeah. And i i know for i went on it three years but i think that three years that led me to rehab man that lifestyle i, yeah. I kind of felt like i thought i was a rock star like kind of you guys even though we just did a dirt bikes but that lifestyle i don't understand how you guys how there's a lot more guys that just do not how all those guys aren't drug addicts man because right. just playing in front of thousands people are looking up to you guys just the music like I get it you know the addiction and that stuff in that world how how did it how did you end up uh you know kind of fast forward and you got addicted to drugs and alcohol how did that all kind of happen I guess well you know it's funny you said that too because like I I totally agree with you because it's like yeah it's this you're on tour, it's like you have this like false reality of like invincibility, you know, like yeah. every night is Friday, every day is fucking Friday, and that's your favorite day and of the I don't week. Think, I don't think, maybe you, know? you understand how good you have it, but like, I know it's a job, it yeah. is, but like still, it's like the coolest job Yeah, ever, it's man. the coolest job it's... in the world, and you know, you get to travel the world, and um, you know, you get to be a kid still on stage. For an hour a night, I still get to be that seven-year-old that fell in love with a guitar. Yeah, and yeah. I still get the... It's the passion. I, so I'm always still chasing that, even though there's days of like, you know, or times it's like, oh, we have a crazy 19-hour flight, then we gotta drive, and it's like, you know, those are all quality problems, really. Yeah. It's, all, it's all worth it once you step on stage and it goes. You know, just like you getting ready to, preparing for something, mm -hmm. and then go, doing a race, or a fucking uh, freestyle ramps, band, yeah, you know, yeah, all yeah. that shit, like, all that, it's just, it's all for that, you know. And that. you're not just in a small band. You guys are strung out. I mean, I got my strung out tattoos. Jordan you guys did have, it, right? Didn't Jordan, Jordan do it? Jordan did tattoo? it. Kind of <laughs> sketchy, but I mean, you guys have die die hard fans worldwide. I mean, how did it for you? Why we're here? Obviously, uh, how did did you have a drug problem back in the day? I um, I, I think I, I just I've, I've really quick. I've heard stories about you, and I've seen pictures. I only know you now from being sober. Hearing stories and seeing pictures of you back then, I I, I don't see it. Yeah. it. It's just, it's crazy, the transformation and like how uh, beautiful like sobriety is and like what you, you turned your life into, which we'll talk about. It's just so proud of you, but I only know you for this guy. Right. You know, I don't know you, well, the other guy. We which, have we have funny stories because you and I, we'd, we'd cross paths a lot. Because, you know, because Jordan, our drummer, being in the motor scene, that's how I know yeah, all the yeah, Metal Militia yeah. guys is all from you guys. That's why I know when you say Krusty Demons, I go, yeah, that's like whenever there's moto guys that come to the show, fucking like you, Mad Mike or any of those guys show up, they're like, hey, they're dude, Ashes, play Ashes. They yeah, before, know that. I remember before, anytime I would go out and like jump my dirt bike hundreds of feet, 
I'm listening to Strung Out every time. So I mean, for you guys, you guys don't know what a part of uh, my life just. Do I remember? With you you remember Australia? We were on Australia together, right? I remember the crazy story. We were in Australia, yeah. and I remember we were just you guys walking down the, the same road, time, yeah. but we didn't know that. Yeah. And then I think we just ran into we, you guys. We ran into like you in a, Brisbane. It was me and Jake, and like you, and like I want to say Twitch or something. Yeah, we, and we ran into Deegan, each other, and it was like literally we we're up, just walking like, down the road, and we linked up, and then <laughs> we like followed you guys, and we went to all the shows. Yeah, and that was a really cool. That time. was rad because we we're like I remember Jordan saying you guys were on the tour. You know, hey, dude, we should have linked up with the militia guys. I'm like, well, I just saw them earlier and <laughs> just ran into Dude, those guys. That's you know, so but, uh, funny, man. Yeah, I, I, I was totally rad. forgot about that. And then I had, you know, I'd see you at the uh, at 24 Hour Fitness and see me back when I was living there. I'd see you with uh, Mark Smith a <sighs> lot. I'd man, run into you there. That was a bad time. Yeah, and that's funny because that's when we were both in our, where we were in our disease. And even when I got my DUI, I got a DUI, woo, um, back in 2006, I had to do my community service. I mean, I had to bring up our, our stuff, but we, we did community service at the same place at the at the Simi Valley uh, fucking sewer, because I showed up and then they're like, "Yeah, you know this guy named his name's uh, Scummy." Like, are Colin? you serious? And I'm like, I know, I know fucking Colin. They're like, "Yeah, like he was just here, so I took your place right no when you fucking way. left." I showed up and I was yeah, a new guy, raking. washing carts, fucking raking, <laughs> like doing all that shit. We gotta yeah, talk yeah. about this after, man. But the 24-hour <laughs> fitness, literally, like my heart's starting to pound thinking about that because that was in the stage of my addiction where me and my other buddy don't want to call him out, but we were snorting crystal meth. And I remember at that stage, I was doing meth, and I'd go to 24-hour fitness, like literally like the fucking shit you see on TV, like just running like a hamster, just to, I had to do something. Yeah. But I wasn't going there to train. It was it was a dark time of my life, dude. Uh, just, it's crazy how like I just, my heart's pounding right now well, thinking it, about that well, yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's that trigger. It, it made uh, that, you know, that, and that memory like, came up. You know, yeah. it's, it's crazy because you think about like, you, you're because where we are right now, you're thinking back to that going, Holy shit, I was doing that. Like, yeah. going to the gym, going to the gym on high. Crystal you know, meth. Like, and it's just meth. weird. I, like, I that's healthy. You know, yeah, like, I wasn't growing the shit up. Shit, we were doing. Way. You know, yeah, like, it's just disgusting, man. Um, how did you get in to drugs and alcohol? I, again, yeah, it yeah, was. I know, um, it's like very just straight punching you right there, but it, like. Yeah, it was. It, it was you know being in, in the band. Um, you know, again, like I said, that you know every day is Friday. I mean, you're on tour, uh, honestly, like all the but time. Were you like, a partier when you were a kid? No, I think that's the thing is I wasn't, I, I was almost like a straight edge kid, but I okay. wasn't like the hardcore. Yeah, yeah. I, I just didn't do anything. I tried like a sip of like booze when I was like uh, like 14. My, my parents used to always be gone. They'd always be playing bingo. They're like bingo yeah, yeah. So it was pretty much me and my sisters all the fucking time, you know, growing up. Yeah. So I'd always have a friend spend the night and my parents had a gnarly liquor cabinet, but they weren't like gnarly boozers or anything. And, um, but I remember like having black velvet whiskey <laughs> and just trying that and just like, Ugh, like, but, yeah. uh, I tried it just like a sip. My other friend that spent the night that night, he got hammered and we took off on our bikes and went riding, you know, smart idea. Yeah. Let's get hammered and ride our bikes. <laughs> We're 15, you know, but, uh, yeah, I just never, it, I, I didn't, didn't care for it. And it wasn't until I was uh, 18, 19, um, I finally just started smoking weed. In it. But it was, um, I smoked weed with my best friend, Luke, and um, he, all of a sudden, I, it is like, I did it, and I did it like every day. And it, that, so that was like the first, you know, side of like, huh, like you're doing it every day, all of a sudden, I was weed, yeah. you know. And I was smoking weed all the time. Then I started drinking. I was, you know, coming up on 21. So it's like, you're, you're going to start yeah, drinking, yeah, that's right? Just you know, what kids do. Started doing that. So I was already drinking and, and, um, and smoking weed a lot, you know. And then but when I joined Strung Out, I was 23. And uh, right before I joined Strung Out, like three months before I joined Strung Out, I went to Santa Cruz um, to see my friend who was going to UC Santa Cruz. And um, we were drinking all night, you know. And then um, we went to his hotel. Or him, uh, his, his his apartment, uh, yeah. whatever, uh, and um, they they got blow, they got cocaine, and I remember being so like, that was like the second time I ever saw coke, you know, and I was like, oh. it was kind of scary. For, it was like fucking freaked me out. I remember the first time I saw it, I was in Newbury Park at a hotel with my friends on a New Year's Eve party, and I saw it, and I was like, dude, like I have to leave, you know. I was like, ah, oh. but the second time around, years later, I was curious, you know, and um, my, I'll never forget my friend's quote was like, you know, because I was like. Maybe, maybe I should do it. And he's like, <laughs> he's like it's healthier than a Snickers bar. <laughs> and I was just like, like, whoa, Come okay. On. And I was like, all right. So I did it. 
And then it was just like off to the races. And then all of a sudden, within like an hour after we all four of us went through it, I was like, here's my ATM card. Go, you, you, you know where yeah, the guy yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. You know where to find that guy. Go get some more. And I did that. And then I didn't, you know, I did it all that night. Felt like shit the whole next day, but I did it. I was like, whoa, I finally did cocaine. Like, whoa, that's a pretty big deal, yeah. man. Like, that's like stepping over the threshold. You know, it's like everything else is like, okay, but when you start doing like heroin or crack and, you know, coke, it's like you people are like, like, dude. You graduated, you kind of like yeah, you're stepped gra- up. <laughs> Got a PhD in cocaine. Do you have a you good know? time? Because I just remember looking back at it. <clears throat> I'll never forget the first time I smoked, the first time I got drunk, the first time I did blow. And I was very much the same story. I, I, I in my whole... High school years, I never drank. I was like a good guy. Yeah. I, I raised by a good family. Um, it's just gateway drugs. I don't know. We got to get in this topic about weed, alcohol. But looking back at it, it was. Mm-hmm. You know, For sure. You start off with drinking and people are watching this. It's true. You know? It pretty much unlocked that door for a big house of different rooms you can go you explore. Smoke weed. You know mm-hmm. what getting high is about. You know, I remember the first time I smoked weed. It was a scary thing. Sure. Boy, those guys are smoking weed. I did. I'm like, well, I did that. What's coke like? The same yeah, story. Yeah. So I get that. And then, you know, you did it once, you'll do it again. And then for you, you liked it, right? Yeah, I liked and then, it. And then it's funny with coke because coke became my drug of choice. That's the, that's the thing that brought me to my knees. That's almost it killed was cocaine me. Cocaine was Cocaine straight up, you know. Um, and, you know, drinking hard liquor too. But that was pretty much me trying to meet cocaine because I could get drunk enough to have my inhibitions completely lowered to go, all right, I'll make the call to the dealer. Yeah. I'll, I'll go out and fucking go to some sketchy neighborhood and buy crack. Yeah. You know, well, that was, I was doing crack towards the end, but, um, but again, I was doing it, you know, like yeah, yeah. nothing mattered. You know, priorities gone. Drugs were the priority. I didn't give a shit. You what know, music my was it? Was music number two at that it, point? It, yeah, it became it? it, you know, obviously, you know, it became just such a, I mean, music was still in my life. It always has been, but it was, I, I was still enabled, you know, like, I know my band was really trying, you know, the best they could. Was you know? it becoming a problem? Because I just look at Coke, rock and roll, yeah. on the tour, it kind of goes, goes together if it you goes. can pull it, but there's no successful drug act, yeah. drug act out there. Yeah, there, for there sure. There really isn't. Um, how, how many years was it before it really started to become a problem? Honestly, it was, you know... I hate to use the word boredom, but you know a lot of stuff gets gets done out of boredom. And yeah, it was yeah. when we were on the 2005 Warp Tour, we were on the entire tour, and it was about three weeks in. I was doing really good um, of the tour, and you know I wasn't. At this point, I had like six months of like, you know, I I'd smoke weed, yeah. you know, but I wasn't drinking or doing heart, you know, blow anymore. And um, I got on the Warp Tour. Then about three weeks, you know, into it, I was just so bored uh, and just kind of like jaded and just, I don't know, I, I don't know where I was at, you know, but I was just like, I'm over it. And then I found out the guy who sold it on tour and I got it that day. And then it was every day on the warp tour. And it's not like I'm like sharing it with Colin and hanging out with you. Hey, yeah, let's yeah, go. Yeah. It was fucking hiding out, yourself, fucking yeah. taking off, you know, like and that's I think where it, in it your lifestyle, it's, it's a lot easier because man, like you're, you're in a band yeah, it's, you're it's like so on a tour acceptable. bus. So it's so not like you have a yeah. nine to five and you're, I mean, dude, you're like a rock, you're a rock star, you know? So it's a little bit. It's yeah, totally, totally acceptable. Yeah. Acceptable and it's like, there. And, and the band is called strung out. So yeah. like, I mean, it, it goes hand in hand. And then like, you know, when you're on tour and you become this guy, you know, like, or I think, uh, like, I started thinking I'm Chris from Strung Out and people yeah, want to yeah, hang out yeah. and they want to give me drugs and that's what it was. But really, I, you know, I learned this when I got sober, my, you know, my identity of who I really am is Chris Aiken and I'm in this band and I can do this and this, but I kind of like, I got lost for years, you know, yeah. just who I was, what the fuck I was, what was I doing? You know, what was I really doing with my life? And, and um, you know, there's plenty of moments of on my knees and just begging for help, crying and just, fucking up and fucking up trying to get to where I am now you know and it's crazy I still trip out on it you know I just got five years last month I know and that's you know. like I want to get in the sobriety talk man I'm so proud of you because I see you. all your you're kind of like me likewise kind of making like sobriety number one and we go back and forth I see your posts I it, it's just so rad to see you really just making sobriety number one and yeah. I see like how that's where your here. life is, man. Um, Everything we have right now is because we're sober. And, and making it know? number one. I really feel, yeah. you know, you make it number one, everything else follows. But back to like more of the dark times, when did it become a, like a problem where the bandmates, do they want to kick you out? I've heard some stories. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, I mean here, yeah, we, there was moments like that Warp Tour that was just like a big, that was a big eye opener 
I mean, there's moments before of like, wow, dude, fucking Jesus, you know, where I was getting worse and worse. And on coke, you do some weird shit. Yeah, dude. dude yeah, you do shit I would never fucking do. Uh, yeah. You know? In my mind, like, I would never do sober or even consider, you know. Yeah. Again, you know, it's like once I do cocaine, it, cocaine is doing the next line of cocaine. It, it just, it keeps getting darker and darker and weirder. And um, so I know zero control, you know. I could always stop, but I could never stay stopped. Yeah. You know, so that was... Uh, but yeah, there was, uh, it, it was just kind of getting crazier and crazier. That Warped Tour in 05 was like a big eye opener where the band and a lot of other people saw it, you know, saw or, it, and then it was eventually like, you know, my sisters found out about it, you know, then my parents, you know, and cousins, you know, everyone started Everybody. knowing about it. And then it, it got, it kept, you know, getting worse, yeah. you know, and I kept trying to do this on my own. I kept trying. I really did want to quit, but I just, again, I think some nines were, were not ready. No, Maybe? I, no, no, I a hundred percent feel what you're uh, saying. I just think it's weird. Like your typical drug addict, you know, it's, it's still kind of hard for me to say, but I, I'm, I've accepted I'm a proud drug addict in recovery. Right. But like, I feel we have a kind of a same story. Like, I feel like you were raised good family, you know, not many problems. Like it could happen to anybody. Yeah. It's not like your typical person that lost their parents and don't have loved ones and you just turn to drugs. Like yeah. it can happen. It happens to the best have of us. A, perfect yeah. family and you just start with drinking weed you like it it turns into one thing it just it happens addictions yeah. out there i don't think people talk about it enough and that's why i know you are very vocal about it this magazine i think there just needs to be more people like us talking about it telling people that you can really get over this disease man and right. uh, you know it's it's a disgusting disease you know it so it got really bad what made you want to get sober was there a defining moment in your life where you just wanted to put the white flag up and give up or yeah, I mean, suicide there was, there, thoughts? Yeah, I mean, honestly, there was suicide. There was uh, attempts. There was jumping in front of a car and get hit by a car Holy on Olympic Boulevard. Shit, waking whoa. up, getting put into an ambulance. There was, Wait, let's there back was, it up. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty, I mean, and we're talking about this, but like addiction's so real, man. I mean, I just went to an intervention and like I'm sober now I'm happy I'm fucking running doing this but sometimes I forget about how serious it is man yeah going to meetings seeing the new the newcomers come in I would just the intervention just seeing the like the emotions and all the people it's so real man like how gnarly it really is and to get back to the store you jump you wanted to jump in front of a car I get it out of my mind yeah I out of my it. fucking mind um that was like that last year that's the year I got sober too that was 2012 and that was like the last, you know, s seven months of my last hurrah, you know, it was January 1st of 2012, I was evicted from my apartment. I already sold my car three months earlier because I wasn't driving it anymore. Yeah. You know, I was taking a cab to get drugs. You know, but, I mean, thank God for Uber now. I would have loved Uber, <laughs> you know. <laughs> did you I, lose everything from I, drugs? I, you know, or I, did you kind of... I lost everything that I needed to get the fuck out of my life. Okay. I did, you know, and I did. I lost a lot of shit, lost my apartment. I'd rather pay for drugs and pay my rent, you I know, get it, or yeah. get my power shut off. I didn't give a shit. And it's crazy bill. how drugs, like how they just warp your brain into yeah. shit like that, man. Yeah, like, I mean, you just don't care about anything else when it's crazy. I, I totally understand where, where you're coming from, but like to get to the point where you jump in front of a car, I mean, there's a lot easier ways if you want to take yeah. yourself out. What the hell were you thinking? Well, you Why? know, I guess I can, uh, I'll get on that. Let me touch okay. more of like, what I think is the big thing that gets swept under the rug is mental illness in this whole, I, it is, is depression. You know, yeah. I suffer uh, tremendously about depression when I was 11 years old. I, my, my thing, my story is moving around a lot. My dad was always chasing different jobs. So I was at like a new school like every other year, moving, 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 different state, Florida, Colorado, California, back to Colorado. And when I moved back to Colorado when I was in fifth grade, I was like 11. My dad left my mom for like six months. And you know, all these years of trying to fit in, new school, I was just, you know, I started feeling this feeling of like, I'm sad. You know, I don't, I don't know what this is. I've never felt depression and I realized what it was later. I'm just sad. I miss my father, you know, my family, you know, and it's of course when you're a kid, you you think it's, you know, it's because of me. Yeah, you know, you yeah, just yeah. have that blame and it's just me and my older sister and my younger sister. And it's gotta that, be hard, man. that was a big thing for me, which I realized when I got in, uh, in recovery, when I got therapy and I went to rehab was like, there is, there is an 11 year old traumatized uh, Chris that exists. That's the one that does cocaine, the one that drinks till, he, the one that won't answer his phone when you're texting me, where the fuck are you? That's who it is. It's 11 year old hiding, crying, you know? So 
I, I still crazy. suffer from depression. You know, I, I, I'm getting better at it because you know what? I'm sober now and I'm understanding. And you found what the, the main source Yeah, was. I found the seed of like what's growing out of this, out of the ground, the root. I've exposed it, you know, but I'm getting better at it. But um, that's been a huge thing is depression, you know. And it's like when people like Chris Cornell and Chester Bennington or, I mean, a friend of mine in high school. I know a lot of people that have committed suicide, unfortunately, you know, and it's like, it's weird. Like when those guys, you know, uh, Chris and Chester did, it was just kind of like, I had that moment where I was like, I get it, you know, like, fuck, yeah, I've, I've I don't there. see, I, I, I don't understand that. I've never dealt with that. And, you know, you, you wonder like, man, they had it all. They're millionaires. Yeah. Why would you do that? And I don't, and I get people crazy. like, you should talk I more. I don't know much about it. I was depressed when, you know, dope sick and stuff, but uh, that's, that's a tough one, man. Yeah. I've I think, I think honestly, that was my core. Uh, besides, you know, I uncovered a lot of What do you do issues. for that now? Because I know a lot of people with depression, they self-medicate and they smoke weed but i feel that you don't i don't know i don't feel you it, it, yeah that it's stuff. it's and tough think, man yeah it's it's been a thing where i again i try to be open as much as i can and just talk you know as i've done with being in recovery now and going to meetings and always trying to share and speak up and sh you know and be just be honest be vulnerable and that's you know, the how, you biggest know? story right now i'm sorry to interrupt you but for people out there that are dealing with depression, looking at your story right now, you're probably saving life out there as we speak, showing that you can do it, you know, just by going to meetings, what, you know, working your problem. I, you know, I mean, just, sorry to interrupt, but no, you're, how are you're you right. doing it? I'm just, it's, it's very compelling because you're doing it right now. And a, a lot of people out there that are, are suffering, I'm sure they don't think there's a way out or yeah. they just they are going to go to the doctor and get Valium Xanax and fucking then they're just onto that problem, but you're doing it with none, of, you know, you're doing it sober. I'm doing it and sober doing and I'm it. doing it with- And you uh, can do it. Yeah, you can do it, you can do it sober. Um, and again, I, I think the reason I've gotten there is because uh, the depression stuff is because I'm getting braver about exposing myself and talking to people and helping me because again, that was self-medicating from a lot of issues I had uh, with past relationships with an ex and my dad and you know, I was depressed. I couldn't talk about it. I couldn't be a man enough to like say, hey man, I'm fucking having a bad day. You know, like, especially like, I think anybody, guy or girl, doesn't matter. It's like, it's tough. It's tough to yeah. really, to, to show that weakness to somebody, to tell them like, hey man, I'm, I'm not feeling good. Like, I'm just fucking sad. What's wrong? You just bought a house. I know, but I'm, I'm fucking crying, dude. I'm just sad. Is like, this it's, back when you were doing drugs? Where, yeah. And then when you do drugs, the problems kind of go away for yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's temporary solution for long-term pain, always. That's you know, a good one. That's always what it is. So I'd always have that temporary solution. And the next day, it's like, oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. For, that's why I did that last night. I was depressed, yeah. you know. And then, You're really just stacking on more problems. Yeah, and, and then all of a sudden, it's like more, <laughs> way more problems, you know. But It's uh, a big one. When you, get, when you go to rehab, you really you face the music, Yeah, you know. And that's a big thing. I want to hear your story. For me, going to rehab, you know, you're sober. They see our story, like how happy we are. But it took a lot of work to get where yeah. we're at. You know, there's a lot of problems I had to fix. I'm sure with Fuck you. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, how yeah, is man. your rehab story? How did you turn it around? I guess. Wow. Well, you know, again, I, it, I don't know, man, I, I trip out on that a lot, you know, especially coming up on my sober birthday every year, a lot goes through my mind about those last few months leading up to getting sober and really wanting it. But I'm going to, it was uh, through music cares. Uh, my friend Heidi, uh, was just, um, you know, that was, that was my last big run, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I just had a tour. Uh, we were doing these strung, I was doing these two tours. We were playing these two albums back to back each night. And we had one leg for three weeks and we came home for a week off, and then had another leg for three weeks that were out. So that week when I got home was like when they were like, hey, we got someone filling in for you. Like, get help. You yeah. know, like, we're, we're, you're gonna die. Yeah. Like, you're pretty much gonna fucking die. Because right before that tour, was, was like my second to last relapse. That's where I was out of my mind. I stole my guitar player's car, drove out, fucking, he came back from where he was out on a trip with his wife and fuck, where the fuck are you? And like found me that morning in his car, fucking took off running just with a bottle in my fucking pocket, high as shit. And just fucking, last thing we were doing was just, just being on Olympic Boulevard. And then I woke up with ambulance people, like all these people around me going, holy shit, dude. And I like, and I was wasted, you know, but, so I went on that tour, amazingly, I don't know how I pulled that off, yeah, yeah. but I found out I got hit by a car, 
fucking all this shit, but I was fine. Um, went on tour the next day, and that's where my band picked me up at my house. They're just like, dude. Intervention? They're like, they, they, were, they had plenty of them. Okay. But that was, just, that was just one of like, straight up going, um, wh what, what do we do now? And that's where they finally made the choice of like, let, let's stop enabling it and let's fucking make something happen. Like, let's put our foot down. All right, you're not going on tour. You're not. Like, would that help? You know, and it, it so it, I was really good about it. You know, I, was, I handled it very well when they told me after that last show. And I was like, yeah, it's, it's cool. I'm going to figure it out. And I was trying to, again, do it on my own. Yeah. And I, I lasted about a week uh, at home. And then I just fucking I relapsed. Relapsed again. Again, I could, I could stop easy, but I couldn't stay stopped. So mm -hmm. I relapsed again because I was depressed. Yeah, yeah. Depression came up. Poor me, poor me. But like, oh you didn't God. know what that problem was yeah, at that time. Not, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, I wasn't uh, really discovering it, you know. And um, yeah, I relapsed again. And that was the last, you know, 13-day bender I had. And that's where my friend Heidi... Uh, my friend Heidi Kuda was the one, you know, that was where all the texts, you know, were coming in, Facebook messengers from, from fans around the world that knew about it, you know, like crazy, you know, it's wow. like, fuck, man, like, you know, parent, you know, your ex you haven't talked to in seven years texting you going, hey, you know, or your, your other friend going, um, what do you want to be buried in? You know, like, what, what color suit do you want? You know, like, shit like that. And the only person was, uh, was, Heidi was the one that was still like going, hey, um, there's this thing called Music Cares. Of all the other like texts of like, fuck you, fuck you, yeah, you're yeah. gonna die. There was this one that was a heart that was just fucking her. And uh, this guy, Bob Forrest, you know, Dr. Bob Forrest. From, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was another person I was texting a lot at that time too. Wow. And um, it, it was just like, there were the two, mainly Heidi was the one that was setting that up going, hey, there's Music Cares. It's this organization, they fund musicians into rehab. He said, I'm broke. I just came home and just blew all my money again. Yeah. Blew it all in two weeks. Like, I got nothing. I'm in a shitty hotel room in Hollywood doing drugs nonstop. I was trying to kill myself. I was too much of a chicken shit to, like, just get a gun or yeah, and just yeah. jump off a bridge or whatever the fuck it was. I wanted to be found by a maid. I wanted a maid to walk in my room and find me dead and make it, like, this thing. But, um, yeah, it's somehow I had some weird, I don't know, man, like, Something, I don't know what the hell it was, some higher power, something saved me, something got me a moment of clarity. I get it. And like, it was weird. I, you know, I almost can't even describe it. It's just my mind came and comprehend it, you know, like, but uh, it's weird. I happened and I ended up going, Music Harris helped out. And then it was like, um, uh, my friend Melanie actually drove me out to, uh, to Thousand Oaks. It was funny because they were like, yeah, we got you a rehab. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah, rehab Malibu. Like, fucking, yeah, it's going to be rad. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm high as shit still. Yeah, yeah. You know? like, I'm, but it uh, ended, ended up being like, yeah, it's, it's actually in Thousand Oaks. And I was like, what? Like, Thousand Oaks? Like, that's where I grew up. You know, like, that's where I went from elementary to high school. Like, the full you know, circle. Like, that's where I fucking cut my teeth, you know. Like, that's where I first <laughs> smoked weed and drank, you know. And so it was actually like, the weird benefit that happened to me was because my treatment was in TO and I was living actually out here in Ventura, like in Ventura, Santa Paula, out in like, uh, out in the boonies out there where like it's just avocado trees yeah, and yeah, oranges. Yeah. Okay. So it's kind of like, I'm really lucky to, to how it happened, how I was living there and then Monday through Friday from eight to five, they would bust me out to TO and I'd go to treatment, you know, five days a week. And then, um, so yeah, it was kind of weird. So I was like, TO, this is where like, Memories are coming back, you know, so it was, it was weird it's how it happened. How, it is crazy how things happen yeah. that way, and I feel you on that, man. Uh, did you, when you went in to treatment, did you know you wanted it that Yeah, time? I, I knew I wanted it. I, I wanted it for a long time, you know, yeah. but... Um, you just couldn't do I it. I just couldn't do it. Maybe I wasn't ready. I was ready, and then I had a few days under my belt, and then I'd be like, I'm good. You know, I'm good. Yeah, I, yeah. I, like, when I went three days earlier, I was like, you know, looking up rehabs. You know, and going, fuck, you know, shit, this, this stuff's expensive. You and know? people out here are watching this story. Like, what? I, I try and tell them, you know, it took me to pass out in my truck and run into, like, five cars. Yeah, I mean, you're telling me, yeah. Yeah, that led me. I wasn't strong enough to, like, and I don't think many people are. Yeah. And when they tell me how do, how, I need help. How can I get sober? And I tell them the truth. The only way I, I could do it was go to rehab, but, like, it takes a lot, man, and the it's money. Hard, that was the hardest thing like I had to do. The hardest thing to fucking go there. It was like you're, uh, you know, your tail between your legs. Yeah, and calling it's like, in, just fucking. Ooh, you yeah, know, like yeah. I like have to do this. Shit I'm, you I'm see a on failure. TV. Yeah, yeah. remember the first night in rehab. Dude, like, that first, the first week. <laughs> how the fuck am first I? First night, come in that first night, showing yeah. up there like ten o'clock at night. 
I made the guy stop at like the only fast food place around was Jack in the Box. Well, Jack in the Box <laughs> spent like twenty dollars because I haven't eaten in days. Just got all this fucking food. I show up, and I'm like, you know, in this room in this house, and um, there's like a girl who's like there for like overeaters, you know. So yeah, I felt yeah. bad later, but I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm eating all this fucking crap food in front of you, but yeah, it, what a weird. That is yeah, crazy. that was tough. And then after like the first, you know, the next day waking up, and you were like, you were on the heavy side back then, right? Yeah. And that's like hard to believe too. I mean, so not only did you change your life and get sober, but like you're you're healthy now. I see you running yeah. all the time. You'd made a complete 180, yeah. and it's still hard for me to see the old Chris, man. Um, how was it in rehab? Did you was it a breeze? Because like I said, if you want it, it is a breeze. Um, you know, yeah. For it, me, I, I guess I'm just telling my story. No, for me, it was because right. I was just, I was ready. I gave up. Yeah. What was your story? You know, and some people are, are ready, and some people, and some people, some people take 17 rehabs. Exactly. You know, and then they finally get it, or, or some people never learn. Exactly. As sad as it is, and they, yeah. they, they become an example because they die, or they end up in prison, and that's, I'd rather be. Happens every on time. the side that we're me and you and you know Novak are at, you know, like and all that's of 2%, us. Two percent. You know, right. and it is, man. Like I know. Uh, for my rehab, how many people are still sober? And it's me and another girl. Yeah, you know? same with but, my uh, rehab. It's crazy. Yeah, it's really, and I go, it's wow, sad. there's a lot of people there. But um, uh, but uh, I'm sorry, what was your question? Uh, how did, uh, just that, your rehab experience. I, how was it? Was it hard for you? I just, the, sure. the whole thing with this story is like, I'm interested, but just helping people out yeah. here. Because people are watching this, and I'm sure people are like, you know, I want to I wanna go to rehab. And how was, you know? Again, yeah, the hardest thing I ever had to do was do that. And then, you know, it's like, it's like standing on the other side of fear is always love. You know, it's whatever you're fearing is where you should go. Whatever you're not sure of um, is go. The, the best thing is always on the other side of it. And it was that, you know, it was tough. It was tough because I, I was fearful. I, uh, you know, completely broken spiritually, mentally, yeah. but, you know, financially. Just you not know, the person yeah. you grew up as. I was you fucking, were a different fucking yeah, person. Yeah, I was fucking, I gained drugs. weight. I was you know, yo-yoing, just, you know, I'd lose weight, gain weight, you know, and I just fucking became, I, got, I, got, I was like at 70 pounds heavier at one point in my using. It's crazy. I'm like 156 right now. That's <laughs> I crazy. I was at 232 at one point, you know, just because just fucking on coke and being a mess. But um, That's crazy. My man. experience uh, for me, you know, yeah, you know, I, I was like, I fucking, I'm here. Let's fucking do this, dude. Yeah, it's yeah. like, I, it's like when I got my, honestly, when I got my DUI that time, and it's funny because I say that because I got a DUI and I got clean for about a year, but I was smoking weed. And then six months after my DUI, I did coke. And then six months later, you know, on the warp Tour, and I was fucking full blown again. You know, so it, 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 it's, it never goes away. It's waiting. And know, I feel the, what you just said, and I just want to bring this up because I get it so many times as people, they hit me up, they're like, you know, I'm preaching I'm sober, and they're like, well, dude, you still smoke weed. And then I get people saying I'm sober, but I still smoke weed. That's not sobriety. I, I, you know, yeah. I'm not, I'm, I'm, sure, I'm I agree not, with you. I'm not, I agree uh, with you. I'm pro weed. I, I think it's definitely, it helps out a lot. For but sure. I feel if I agree you too. are a drug addict, it's got to be nothing. Yeah, I 100% I agree. I think it's no mind altering chemicals at all. Exactly. Nothing. And that's where I get a lot I of. I understand people need pills for uh, depression or. Uh, blood pressure. No, exactly. Things, you know, and I get even that. if you break but, uh, a leg, you eat Norcos. But if you eat them how they're prescribed, yeah. it's fine. You yeah. know, if you need depression medicine, that's fine. It's when you abuse them. But exactly. it's just that topic's really hard for me to take in because sobriety yeah. means sobriety. I 100% agree. And people agree. think, and like I said, I'm not against weed at all, but. I just feel that your body is made to be ran on like nothing. Yeah. I have so much fucking energy. People say you can't sleep. Dude, when you're 100% sober, just things seem to fucking work. Yeah. And it's really scary if you're using something to like give up. It was the scariest thing ever to give up drugs. Yeah. It's fucking scary, man. And uh, what am I gonna do now? Well, yeah, know, what like, are you gonna do? But it just what, what happens. What are you doing Friday night? You know, or exactly. on tour? What am I gonna do on what tour? Do you do? I'm sober now. You know, How much what, more fun is it for you? At, at a fucking at a motocross event, you know, like where I used to party with my boys. What am I gonna do now? Exactly. You know, it's like, I'll tell you one. When I'm sober, I have way more fun than any dude out there drinking yep. or doing drugs and Same it's hard here. like before you look back and like how the fuck am i going to go on stage in front dude when i every time i see you guys play you are having a smile on your face you're <laughs> the only dude like really rocking out there and it's like i'm telling my wife i'm like dude look at this like he's like me just all spracked out he's yeah. like he's just having a <laughs> yeah. good time and it's just like it makes me smile because it just shows that you can have like such a bitch in life you're a fucking rock star in my eyes you're out there 
sober. You can do it. Dude. You can do that's it. like the biggest thing. I'm just trying. You're trying to tell. You yeah, can do it, man. It's like, and like your it's life's definitely amazing. Can do it. And you know, so you you get sober. How's your life now? Being sober. Wow. You know, it's 100% better. You know, it, you know. I'm not gonna lie. There's, I have moments. You know, um, I, I, I'll, I'll fucking be honest right now. Like, um, I went out and got a, an espresso and a croissant while you guys were doing, you know, Novak's interview. And I, I came back in the bathroom taking a piss. And I just fucking, it just, the insidious disease came up. And it was just like, you know, it'd be great to get cocaine right now. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? It is. That it still pops up, you know? So it never leaves you, I don't think. But it's, it not, it's, not, so, it's not so constant and just barking, you know, like screaming in your ear. It'll, it's like you're in a car when I was in my addiction. It's like I'm in a car and my addiction's in the passenger seat going, hey, let's, let's go right there. Okay, let's pull over here, man. Yeah, let's get drugs. And then after a while, when it got really bad, you know, I would be in the passenger seat and he's driving, just getting drugs. <laughs> and eventually I'm in the back seat going, yeah, dude, fucking, yeah, just go there, go, go for it. Like, here's my ATM card, you know, but like, but now. <laughs> and I get it. You, you know what I'm saying? You have like, that voice in your head. It doesn't go away. It doesn't and go just away. It just feels like I'm talking, you're talking like sobriety so peachy. It's still not. You still have the rough days, but yeah. when you're sober, it just feels like you can just get over these hurdles I have a way, lot easier. Way more better days. I have way more better days than these hard days. And the hard days, when it's a hard day, uh, like I say, the addiction is still in the car. He's always going to be there. So it's like be mindful of where it's at. You know, it's always close to you. Like yeah. I'm only, I'm only one bad decision away from relapsing. You know, like one bad moment away. And now I, I, I like to envision my, my addiction. Um, it's it's in the it's in the car seat now. It's it's this little baby in a car seat that's <laughs> fucking whining at me and crying. So every now and then it's gonna cry and might might throw. Hey, just look back. Like, what okay. are you doing? Shut up. We're not getting cocaine. <laughs> we're not. You know, like we're driving. You know, like we're going to go hang out with Colin and Ventura. <laughs> Shut up. You know, I got this. You know, <laughs> like it does that. So it it happens. It's but, there. It's there. But I mean, these last. You know, and I, I, I love what you do with recovery, Colin. Like how, you know, we in what we're doing, we have this, this platform that we're, you know, we get to do this with. To I share. respect that, but it's right back at you in know, the same way because you're we're just doing, like me. And it's, we're doing the same thing. We're doing this because uh, it's, you know, there's a there's a part of it where it's a it's a selfish thing about like I I need to look out for number one. Number one is me. If I don't take care of me, then I can't fucking show up for you. I can't fucking help you out when your car is broke down at three in the morning. Yeah. I can't do this. You know, so I always have to look out for number one, it's me. Um, but so each year, you know, yeah, I was proud that first year. Fuck yeah, like holy shit, I got a year. You know, Facebook, here's a picture of me. Here's a year later, here's what I look like. You know, like. It's amazing. You know, and then so every year, but every year doing that, like uh, the messages I get, you know, and the comments, you know, and like, and then now it's on tour. It's like there's so many more people that come out to shows for Strung Out for me that come out and they're coming up. They're like, hey, I brought my other buddy. They, they, they've heard of your band, but like, they're like, this guy's 19 years sober. This guy's 23 years sober. Isn't it amazing? Dude, and they're like, coming up just giving me chips. Going, hey, just want to like, let you know we love you. Dude. And like, you want to hang out and get coffee? I'm like, Whoa. I feel like it's almost like, like an underground club or something. Yeah. I don't know. Because you wouldn't like if there's just, it's so out there, addicts recovering addicts and like you were talking earlier like how just beautiful people are when they're sober and like Fuck just man. how like you're you're the coolest dude man just everybody in sobriety it's like kind of like brothers or something because yeah. i like your stories just like mine mine's like his and um the message that we're sharing you can get your life back and you can get sober man you know and it's even like funny you say that too i, I like uh, that comic, I almost want to say it's better than you don't get your life back. You, you get a you get a real life. You actually get a chance to really fucking get a life. You know, like I, cause I, I had this a lot with people when I was getting sober and getting out of rehab, and a lot of comments were or people messaging me, text messaging me, going, "Dude, we just want the old Chris back." I go, and I was this is already when I was four weeks into rehab, and I was just completely transforming yeah. and going and going. That's a weird statement to say. You want the Chris because the old Chris. Is it has a lot of issues. Yeah, you know, like even before he did drugs, he was you know uh, uneducated in himself, unaware yeah. of like how he feels and how to operate. And now I get it. Now and I'm still learning. Yeah. You know, I'm still learning so much. So I always like, you know, to uh, kind of rebuttal on that and go, you know, you, you actually get a better life. You don't get an old life back. You get you get a new life. You get a new chance. It's like the, you get the the 2018 
Eddie Bauer luxury, you know, leather interior model that and no it, one's driving it, yet. It just feels like everything's better now. Dude, it I, is. I, I think, I don't know, I tell my wife this, that I would not have changed a thing because I realize how good everything is now. Yeah. I mean, at one time I had everything when I was using, but now I'm sober, I just, everything is just so much more grand and just just everything about it, man. Yeah. And like I said, people watching, they're fucking so preachy, whatever, but it happens, it doesn't happen overnight. You definitely have to work it's for work, it, but yeah. people out there, if you, uh, go to rehab and make sobriety number one, you'll feel what we're feeling right you, now. You can uh, every have a, person, yeah. every person that you go to meetings and you you hear all these miracles. I remember when I w first went to meetings and I, hearing all these people that made this sobriety word number one and they're just talking about miracles and I'm like, what the fuck are these guys talking about? I get it. Yeah. It happens every every it single does. person that makes sobriety number one. Every day is a miracle. Happen. Every day you wake up is a miracle, I think. I always say that when I'm, even I'm getting coffee, like. Hey, how's your day going? I go, great, I woke up this morning. <laughs> you know, like everything else is quality problems. You know, like yeah. every person in these meeting rooms that you meet, um, even someone watching this right now, like you're a miracle like, right now. Like I guarantee you got, you got some stories, some war stories to share of going, holy shit, like, How, you yeah. know, I, I need to hear this because, you know, we're, we're soldiers fighting a war and we need other soldiers. We need you to join our war and help us because I can't do this by myself. Unless you're Rambo, you know, like yeah. you can do it, you know, but uh, and that's but, the uh, biggest thing, like doing this, this for me is like my meetings and yeah. my sobriety talks, same with you yeah. on your Instagram. I feel that that helps me. I'm sure it helps you. That's the biggest thing in recovery. Like Connecting you can't people. hold it in. You can't get sober and just hold You got to give it back. Yeah, and, you got uh, to. You have to. And just what you said, all the people that come up to you, it's like, uh, you just get so much respect for being sober. Yeah. So if you're newly, you know, sober, be happy about it. Come out and try and help somebody else because it's uh, it's amazing. Yeah, and it's like it's like it's a, it's a game of patience, you know. Of like, because I know some people are like are getting out of rehab and like they want, I want the miracle. I want. It. I go, dude, just it just exactly. Just, just be you right now. Just keep moving forward. Stop pulling over off the side of the road to go. Where's my fucking? Where's a miracle happening? And you know, where's my all this? It's like just keep moving forward, and you're, it's gonna That's come. It's a very to you. important thing. What it is. this whole interview is about? Just what you said that this interview, we're trying to help people, but it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. It took me, you know, and I feel that you have to just put your ego aside. And the I biggest was, thing. you know, the this interview is sure about ego, yeah. Yeah, this interview is about you, but when I got out of rehab, I was once a dirt bike rider getting sponsors. I was printing t shirts for minimum wage. I've never had a job, but I was so happy about it, mm -hmm. you know? And the th I got my own job after that. I own all these businesses. It just yeah. happens. You just got to take take it for what it is, have a smile on your face, and things just work out. Don't know how it happens, but it just does, it feels like. Yeah, like, like look at where you're at right now. Like, would you want to even be back to the old calling? No, no. Back 15 years ago, that was... You know, the militia at its height and doing all that shit. It's like, no, like, mm -hmm. look where you're at now. Like, And there's no way when I got out yeah. of rehab that I would think I'm <laughs> sitting here, you know? It yeah. just, things happen, and uh, I'm really... Glad to call you my friend, Chris. Likewise, you're, man. Uh, what else? You, you, you've been a, you've been a big uh, anchor, you know, in my life. Honestly, like, um, you know, through Jordan, our drummer, who's uh, in the moto scene, and that's how I, you know, met Colin and all the metal militia guys, and this whole. That's how I know Colin. That's how it's from my drummer, you know. Yeah. It's from that whole scene, and then that's, you know, then our our stories of seeing each other back yeah, getting yeah. fucked up, and you know, <laughs> and then at the fucking sewer plant and see me, you know, like knowing about Colin. Well, we got to talk, yeah, we'll talk about that later. That's funny. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it was just important, you know, like, again, getting sober and coming out on the other end, you know, when you're in rehab, you know, you have this, this false sense of reality, you know, you're safe, you know, like you're wearing shin guards, knee guard, you know, yeah. helmet, and then you get out in the real world and it's like you, that day you get out, you know, all the shit comes off and you're like, okay, I'm going home and you're like, I'm home, all of a sudden I'm home and I'm like, holy shit, what, what do I do now? Like, I'm alone. Okay, that's my first sign is depression. I start getting depressed. I'm like, oh, I'm like... I'm around people all the time on tour. Now I come home and I'm like down to zero and I'm mm -hmm. like, I start getting depressed and I start, my mind starts thinking too much, but. Are you going to meetings? Like yeah, that yeah. Time? And that's yeah. the thing, like a lot of people, they go to rehab, they hold up their plaque. That's when the work starts, yeah. is after. So just always making sobriety number one, meetings, you know, whatever works for you. Yeah, what, yeah exactly. One. And it's, it's your recovery, you know? Like I always say that with people that talk to me, newcomers or people that are trying to become a newcomer. And I go, look, just do this in the just start in the first rule number one is don't pick up or use no matter what don't just don't fucking pick up or use no matter what and it'll start getting better yeah. you know and this is your recovery and just if you need me i'll be here you know yeah. like and 
again, like that, you know, getting out when I got out of rehab, it was, you know, it was kind of scary at first because I, it's like that pink cloud. Then I get home and after like a week, you know, I'll admit too, after a week, I, I made a, I was frantic. I started, I you know, was like, maybe I should call my dealer. You know, I was shaky, yeah. you know, and I, I almost did and I didn't. And, you know, I'm glad I didn't obviously, but um, it goes to show you that I'm not like, perfect yeah yeah you know I have moments still like I like I told you just earlier like in the bathroom taking a piss and I'm thinking about cocaine just every now and then but um yeah, so getting into the scene telling the people it's not it's not easy yeah you it's know? not and easy it's but not... it's worth it it's so worth it like look at the things that we get to do I get to experience and and you know what the, the more people I've met it's like especially being in the music business you know it's like we're we're so synonymous with with drugs you know like you know, it's just what we do. We party backstage. Backstage in Europe, you know, there's no food here, but there's beer. Okay. You know, like that. that's always there, you know. Yeah, but you're so, like, you're the one of the only do it. Well, just seeing you on stage after, you were just smiling on your face and it feels <laughs> like you're partying, but you're sober. I yeah. mean, you're just like, a, you're a very genuine guy, man. Um, we're going to plug all your things in the article I'm going to write about you. Oh, but nice. is there anything that you want to end this out? And to tell the world, I don't know. Um, you know, first of all, thank you for having me, Colin, and recovery today. Um, you know, like I'm so I'm so happy. I'm so grateful that I got to do this and drive down here. And you know, I found out my other friend Brandon's here. We're like Thanks. calling each other, like you're coming here too. Like, <laughs> fuck, it's crazy. Like that's where that it, it was, it was that crazy. Happened. Like, but uh, again, that's the beauty of of where our lives are at now. You know, like I am so such a better person now I'm, I'm, a, I'm a different person i'm not even who i was 15 years ago 20 years ago i'm just a, I'm, a, I'm a i have words like dependability manageability you know like yeah. i got words i can say now you know these like, words you didn't know you know you... like savings account you know i have this word <laughs> called savings account i know how to like spell it and like you know like it's crazy like <laughs> what was that yeah. back in our drug yeah, days yeah back you know back that's just, yeah. it's an amazing story dude your whole story man it's like it's my pleasure because i i look up to you i'm really proud to call you a friend dude and just to know that you're as happy as i am about being sober it's not easy mm -hmm. You can do it. Anybody out there, you guys can do it. Please. It's all about love. It's you know, I've learned the thing I learned is for me, it's it's all about love. Like if I'll, if I'll end on that, it's like, is love yourself. Love yourself first, and you can love others. And I, I tell myself, I you know, affirmations every day. I just wake up and tell myself, it's a, the today's the best day of my life. I love you, Chris. You know, I say it to myself because I need to tell yeah. myself that. I you know, I, I I said love brought me in this world. Love is what saved me from dying, and love is what makes me live every day. You know, and it's like if people aren't told they're loved every day, I'll tell you right now, I love you. I think we'll end it at that. And I love you, love man. You too, That's a great, yeah. Thank great you. interview, dude. Thank you guys. Another rad interview. Thank you guys. Scummy Unplugged. Chris Aiken, we're out.